we have an 89 year old patient that was uh, referred by the GP recently uh, for uh, red blood loss per anum. Um, had a colonoscopy very recently, which showed two large polyps in the um, rectosigmoid, and so was referred for a section of those polyps. Um, I'm almost, because he all also has had a right hemicolectomy. You see the anastomosis right here. Um, but we, so the polyps are actually in the sigmoid. I will uh, pull back to them uh, right now. Um, but they are actually three polyps. So, but I'll give the scope to Andrea once we're there, and then um, he can tell you more about the polyps, if that's okay. Um, um, all are polyps, but we can resect them next time, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Uh, has a scar also. Recent polypectomy scar, yeah. Well, let's just pull back to the sigmoid. We'll fix those ones later um, and have a look and see what um, what these pedunculated polyps are like. And I'll come in there, Peter, and me come, come and take over here. 25, I would say, uh, millimeter polyp uh, is a pedunculated polyp. The head, I would say, is 25 millimeter. And the neck, as compared to the cap, is... Uh, Close to a centimeter, I would say. So now I'm beyond the polyp. Uh, open the loop, please. So you open the end loop beyond the polyp, okay? And I pull back, trying to enclose the polyp within the loop. Is that fully open? If it can ask a question. Yes, certainly. I always find the end the loop kind of frustrating to work with. Um, can you then maybe later talk us through your tips and tricks to place it in a less frustrating way? Uh, certainly. I mean, I think that, that will almost certainly come from the, the feedback from here. So, yeah, for sure. That's the other one. Slightly confusing <laughs> that, there, that there are two of these around, but okay, I, I guess it's another part of real life, I guess. Um, just some comments from what you're seeing um, from the seminar room, uh, guys. Uh, just one small comment from me, David. I'm just thinking that live endoscopy never has um, television of someone being trained to do this sort of thing, correct me if I'm wrong. So I think being trained, you know, watching someone being trained to do this sort of thing is another dimension. I mean, we're, we're now entering an advanced polyphagy course, and what I like to stop slipping down the slippery slope, but... You know, there's loads of stuff to talk about clip placement here, most of it good. So one at the top, and I think there's something about the top one being pushed out here. Okay. Rather than all this suction technique, just push the clip at that area and try and control the orientation and probably it will be fine. And then the bottom also needs to be uh, clipped. And we move on to the next one. So, so Andrea, let's consider ESP. Um, so this is just a quick yeah, I think uh, um, I'm thinking the same because you, the stalk is is really large, so probably we'll have a big vessel, uh, and uh, we had like a, a, a small bleeding in the first one, and the stalk was quite smaller, and yeah. this one yeah. probably will so, so, so here people are cons uh, considering the risk of bleeding with it, if, if you would put a loop on it and, and, and then uh, use snare 
coagulation to cut it through. So people mm -hmm. here are um, saying ESD, um, the other fellas are nodding. So I suppose um, all of them would say ESD. Right, and the reason for ESD is because it's it's semi-pedunculated, not pedunculated. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But also the bleeding risk if he starts, I mean, yeah, I agree. I mean, we, we already did the other two lesions, yeah? These are done. The risk is taken. This is not certain what's going on here, but okay, hopefully it'll be all right, but are we sure about that? Then we have this here, which if we remove it with a snare now, is significantly risk of bleeding. Yeah, we could do ESD now, but resources and time dictate not to do that now. So let's integrate the entire thing and suggest a, a management plan for the patient. John, have you got a view? Oh, John's on there. John, Roland, maybe? Sorry, John has gone out. Uh, he's had to go to the station. So, I mean, I, I think it's a difficult one, isn't it? I think from it, it depends really on what you think the risks are of the other two at this point, um, whether you've got the time. The two, two factors are the risk of those two lesions uh, uh, complicating in some way and the time required to do this one. I think John would definitely want to do an ESD on this one. I don't think he'd want to do anything else based on what we've been discussing. I agree with that and there was time for that is, is limited right now. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go to the, the feedback. So um, I will uh, leave this in the capable hands of PDN. Let's cut the room. Uh, we'll talk about what we did later and um, in the meantime, uh, yeah, take a two to five minute break before we come back. Okay, please cut the room. Let's have a look at this. So here's the video. So let's take the first case. So Andrea, this was yours. What do you feel? How do you feel that that went? Well, uh, inside, I think well overall. Uh, we managed uh, everything. Uh, we removed it uh, completely. Uh, but the could have been. Uh, done better because the loop was detached and so there is for sure room for improvement. Okay, so I, I think uh, you've said something that's maybe not ob obvious to the audience out there, maybe it is. Um, well, let's come back to that part, but first, I mean, just breaking it down, the assessment I thought was good. I think that there was this fold here, so I pushed you to get under there. That's something to take on board. You really need to look closely at the insertion point. Um, the head of the polyp, we talked about assessment of that, and we discussed in detail the fact that there is probably benefit to assess the head, one for size, you'd said that, but also for signs of invasion, um, because that will push you harder to um, get closer to the base, which is what was going on here and the reason why potentially uh, the loop was removed. Um, I think uh, there were a lot of things I liked about this. Um, there was uh, probably the assessment I would say was the was was also about the gravity. I like that very much. Then this was great. I mean, you, you know, you we talked, didn't we? And we changed the loop looking like this, where it didn't work the first time. And you said to me, um, you know, do you have any suggestions? And the only thing I said to you was just, oh, yeah, like that, open it more. So this is what you need. You need the loop fully open um, like this. Um, and it's okay. And uh, you need it to come back um, open like this, like catching the, catching the butterfly. And then as soon as you see it, right, then you direct the tip that way. So in this case, I would have detected directed to the tip to the right, you did. And yes, okay, because it's not um, firm, you cannot pull it under there, but as you come back, you can just direct this so that you don't want this to be bending here. You want it at this point, the V, you don't want the plastic bit out because you can use this, and I was trying to say to Maria, we'll come back to it, to direct it up here. So if you drive the scope this way now, the loop will go that way, even though it's not uh, very strong. And you see that happening here because now you have a good position. And if you just pull back now, this will fall in here, which it does. Luckily, we got around that side part before. And that's the point of having it very wide open to get around the nozzles of the polyp. Then it comes up. And I said to you at a certain point, I think I pushed the scope in, drive in. So you drive in at the base. Perfect, right? So at that point, uh, most people now want to push out. 
most people want to push the catheter out to here. Don't do that. And you, you nicely demonstrated that when you did pull back, the visual, visualization is very difficult here, but when you did pull back, um, I kept saying to you, tip down, tip down, tip down. So, and then, then you suddenly, when you tip down, look, you can see, of course, I think this would have been way too close to the head. So we had to revise it up. And actually, there's quite a bit of stalk under here. So I think then we had the, it here, and then in the end, we had it up here in this. So that was when we had it here. And you see that the value of that pullback thing is still is not pulled back here, but then you can see exactly where it's going to close by pulling back, right? So that's one key fact. And then here, um, where we had it at the end, um, I think we got as close as we could because you can see the attachment to the wall coming in here. For sure you can. So this was good. We talked about pinch point. We oh, talked oh. about blue stalk. Um, and then we to deployed it. Um, so this was all great. And then we talked about the snare position. Uh, we talked about the differences between the snare and the end. I mean, you still have to have a big snare. It's a big polyp. You still have to have a big snare. 35 snare, you did exactly the same. You pulled it uh, back underneath it. Sometimes you need a bit of wiggle, but okay. And then we drove in, right? So this was the original point of attachment. And looks okay, but stretching it maybe could be better. The You, I, you agree with what you said, one third, two thirds here. And I think we had to strive to be better than that. One reason is because you... Um, we want as much stalk as possible, and probably we wanted to go precisely here. The loop is in this orientation, so going kind of back like that, perhaps around the stalk, and therefore perhaps we wanted to go like this. And I think maybe the issue is uh, that we were up like this in a different angle. Well, let's look in a minute. Anyway, you very nicely then sh showed how it could be resolved um, by opening and then just moving up towards the thing. Maybe. We are at the back on the on the loop here, maybe. Anyway, it doesn't look like it, I must say. Although maybe the fact that we're pulling on the stalk is distorting that right now. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, this to me the snare line is here now, back like this. The loop line is hard to see, but it's probably here. So for me, there is still some distance here. So this is why I said it was fine for you to do it. So we did it. And the loop is still on, right? Mm -hmm. For sure, the loop is still on. The loop is still on here. You can see yeah. it. The loop is still on. So it starts cutting. It starts cutting. Um, what starts cutting? The loop starts to cut, if you will, go a little bit further. Yeah, but we're talking about now. Because we're talking about where, I think for it's very important to identify where this went wrong. Mm -hmm. Did it go wrong because this snare placement was incorrect? Did it go wrong because later we spent a lot of time on the cap, pushing, pushing, pushing on it, and it was already injured? No, well, I don't know. We have to find out. Anyway, uh, let's come back to that. So I think all of this was great. Have you? I mean, has anybody else got some tips um, for Andrea um, or notice anything from this that's obvious that's going to help other people placing um, end loops and snares? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what, what is... Uh, something that might sa uh, seem unusual is that Oleg, um, or he he's working at the twelve o'clock position, but I think in uh, so it's not standard for propectomy. You try and always we say it in every video you try having polyp at six, but in, in the case of those large stock polyps, I think you need gravity uh, to help you out, and and I think here it's very basically demonstrated that. Like if you would have that polyp at six o'clock, you the head of the polyp would be just sitting on the base, and it would be much harder. Um, I don't know if you agree with that, but I think yeah, we talked about that at the start. I think before you came in, that the gravity was optimal. I mm -hmm. totally agree with that. Any other things that you've noticed, Sandra? Anything training tips that you've noticed watching this? Uh, the, the the pulling back in, of the end loop to see where the back of the loop is. Sometimes you can have, like with very big heads, is that you, you still have a, a nodule of that polyp inside the loop, and then you can see the, the head of the of the, of the polyp coming into view behind the stalk. Um, but that wasn't the case here, right? for sure. Definitely not in both cases. No, and indeed the, the, the one third 
or the, the division of the stock in, into thirds that you want to have your snare uh, in in the one third closest to the mucosa. I mean, for me, for me, this is optimal. Yeah. What's happened here? That is an optimal uh, with all the very niche, very perfectionist, but very important in my view comments and tips that we gave during it. This this went very well, and the placement of this snare, I think it's fine. Okay, so we cut it off, and then some interesting stuff happens, right? Because this doesn't always happen. So this was very interesting. What happened now? So the loop is still on, but you do have the feeling at the back there's something going on here. Like this is breaking off or it's not quite, so maybe it was or was already damaged here. Um, you see it, sneakily see it here. A bit of loop. Still it's on? Yes. Yeah, to the, the left side. Seems yeah. like starting to cut a little bit in close. You're talking about this? Yeah, I remember this was always there, wasn't it? This was there yeah, yeah. On, from the start. Maybe it was a bit of pushing the cap on it. I mean, because actually yeah, you do see it there. You see that it's maybe maybe it's too tight, but you're at a very strong, you're very big attachment point of the stool here. So if it was going to cut here, it was going to cut back up. Maybe it was too tight. Um, anyway, I think we're talking about limitations of the end of loop technique here rather than anything else. <laughs> so, Okay. Um, and then we used very effectively used water to expose this vessel. So I think this was really nice. I mean, it was with direction, but was really nice. Um, and you, I gave you some tips to take the water out above and below. I think this really helped in the situation. Go beyond, take the air out, come back, take the out. If you start to see air pockets, which you repeatedly did, right? Here's an air pocket, yeah? You've done water. Here's the air pocket. Suction the air pocket closed. Anyway, we got this water view, and then we got this really beautiful view of the feeding vessel. Now, the loop is still on, but it's it's still it's struggling, isn't it? It's coming too superficial here and here. And I think it's it's a combination of uh, maybe quite close, but also mechanical pressure on it. Um, and then um, we talked about the option of coagulation force. For this, it worked out in the end, I think, to, to use a snare tip. It worked out very well. This is a very uh, important technique, rehearsing in your head what you're going to do and then doing it if you have to do something blind. So number one, try not to do something blind. It's very clear to me. I just pushed you in that direction, right? I wasn't interested in discussing it then, but you need to have in your head when to do something blind and when to attempt to get it in vision. It's clear to me this is not happening under vision because it's in the 12 o'clock and because if you sit down on this, almost certainly would fall out of the way. So therefore, I told you, okay, rehearse it in your head, rehearse the direction, go for it. And I mean, quite astoundingly for me, the first time it went very well and you hit the nail on the head, so great work. Um, and then finally, um, the assessment of clipping. And so, yeah, I mean, this, this was very good. I mean, I said to you first, don't do this, I think, didn't I? Try, I said to you, don't do it like this, transform it, turn it round, pivot on it. And then there's this pivot idea. So you really have to think about the amount of tissue you have at the front. So here you had, I think, a decent amount of tissue. But then I kept saying to you, small wheel, I kept, I was controlling quite a bit of the torque to turn and get the torque right. Uh, and it's all about that. And so I really hope that you gain something from, from that. And then there's the question of the back. So you get the good position. It's coming to you, the tissue. And then it's the question about where is this leg? You get, vis you get flashes of it here. So here you get a flash of the edge and the leg. So you clearly see that you need to turn the plane so that that clip leg comes down here. And then you see it coming down. Maybe it's okay now, but probably not. This clip is not very graspy. So graspy. it doesn't grab very well. And therefore, you must make more contact than this. If you're using a very, very sharp clip, then maybe it's going to be fine. This, And then we got it better when... We did a bit of push out, right? So that that movement from here to here, a little bit of push out, um, really improved the situation. And um, Sandra demanded, really improved the situation on pushing out. And then you suction. I think it was the right thing to do. to close uh, and did it. But, but another situation, just one more thing about this. I mean, we did a couple more like that. It went well. But the final thing was um, the final thing was. Uh, this one where there was a kind of push out to blind 
which you should try and avoid. Because I think you had a good position on this at a certain point. And then, no, it wasn't this one, was it? No. Okay, but anyway, so in summary, um, and I'll invite the comments of the others, um, I think this went very well. It's all about slowing. I think I said to you at one point, we all have to slow down for this. You did, you did, and you responded to that. So I think it's also about that being inbuilt as well, so that, you know, when you need to slow down, you can clearly do it. Um, if your mechanical force exceeds your thermal injury, you again end up with a bleed. And if you want to know what this looks like when you're doing an EMR and you cut through too quickly, which is you're closing the snare too quickly, you get bleeding around the edge. If you cut through too slowly, it looks like candle wax around the EMR. Well, the same principles are happening in this stalk. You cut through too quickly, you're not going to coagulate the vessel in the center and you're going to get bleeding. If you cut through too slowly, you will cause a lot of collateral damage and you potentially will carbonize your snare and it will prevent you cutting through. So there is a balance here. So I would close to the mark and I use force quag, slow cook, because I want to coagulate, the trick is in the name, coagulate the vessel. Um, and what I do is I, with gentle movement, using a shearing force associated with coagulation and the snare really tight, you get transection and sealing of the vessel. And I, touch wood, I've been using this technique a long time and I have not had a significant post-polypectomy bleed like this.